بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ہیلو ایوری ون ویلکم بیک ٹو دا پی ایل تھری ہنڈریڈ ایگزام پریپریشن سیریز ویئر وی آر لوکنگ ایٹ دا سیکنڈ لرننگ پیتھ ماڈل دا ڈیٹا ان دس ویڈیو وی آر گوئنگ ٹو ایکسپلور دا ٹاپک کریٹ کیلکولیٹڈ ٹیبلس وچ از پارٹ آف دا سیکشن کریٹ ماڈل کیلکولیشنز بائی یوزنگ ڈیکس ان دا پریویس ویڈیوز وی ہیو اسپینڈ ا لاٹ آف ٹائم کیلکولیٹنگ میجرس اینڈ وی ہیو سین سنگل ایگریگیشن میجرس وی ہیو سین the use of calculate to manipulate filters and we are going to explore measures in some of the subsequent videos as well but there are two other calculations that can be done using dax and these are calculated columns and calculated tables so let's go to the power bi desktop environment and first have a brief look at how we can create calculated columns and then we are going to spend more time on the calculated tables so here i am inside the power bi desktop environment and inside the table view i can see the area where we can create new columns and new tab new tables within the calculations option so let's first focus on the new column so if i put my mouse on the new column icon here it says write a dax expression that creates a new column in the selected table and calculates values for each row so here two things are very important to understand that you will once you are trying to create a new column then the the table that you select from the data pane here inside the data pane only that column will be created inside that table so that is the first thing the second part is that the formula that you are going to create in the form of a dax expression it will evaluate itself for each row so we have already seen this each row thing once we were uh, looking at the iterator functions where we said that the computation happens for each row so what that means is that whatever dax measure you are going to make the dax calculation you are going to create here it is going to be computed for each row which is nothing but the row context so let's look at a couple of examples for the new column creation so i'm inside my transactions data table and here i have this quantity column so i can create a calculated column where i want to multiply this quantity value with a scalar value so let's say i want to multiply this with with 10 so remember we we did something similar uh, using a measure so let's try and create a calculated column and which which actually multiplies this quantity column with 10 so what i need to do is that i just need to select my transactions data table here and then come here and click on new column and this is actually going to enable the formula bar like the way we saw it in the measures but see the difference you already can see a column that has been created in the table so now i am going to give it a name so i am going to give it a name quantity 10x and i simply want to multiply my quantity column so i know that transactions data quantity is the name of my column and i just want to multiply it by 10 and then i am going to press enter here so now let's see how it looks like so here you see that for a column the column is actually visible inside the table and here you see on the right side that this is the column that has been created you see a icon which is different from any of the icons that we have seen so far so this actually represents a, a calculated column and here you can see that we have the all values multiplied by 10 so so what the formula is actually doing that it is first computing it for this for this row then this row then this row and so on and so forth and it goes on and computes itself for all the 2000 269720 records or rows in the transactions data table let's create another uh, column so that we are uh, comfortable with the concept so again i'm going to select my table and i'm going to click on the new column so here i want to create the cost uh, remember we created something with the measure where we actually created a measure to compute the cost for all the transactions so i am going to call this as cost and here i want to multiply my quantity by the product cost so i have to actually use related because i know that because the value of cost is inside a dimension table and i want to fetch it so i will just mention the name of the column now after the related so i know that my product has the product cost so i'll just close the bracket and once i press enter 
again you will see that this is actually going to create a column and this column is actually physically visible here and again it is physically visible here and remember once we created a measure we did not see anything so again you can see that this is the value that has been multiplied so 3 has been multiplied by the unit cost associated with this particular id and this formula has been computed for all the records in this particular table so what we have seen uh, by generating these two very simple calculated column formulas is that physically we are actually seeing the column so what what is the significance of this the significance of this is that if you are creating a calculated column then it is actually adding to the size of your data model so this is a very important thing that you need to understand which actually did not happen for the measure so once we created a measure the measure was just sitting somewhere in the in the memory and it only computed itself once we put that measure on the canvas but the calculated column is going to behave exactly in the same manner that a column that was brought from power query editor so there is absolutely no difference between this one and this one in terms of its behavior on the canvas so we have already spent a lot of time looking at um, you know how the columns actually behave so the calculated columns actually behave in the same way that you can uh, go back and watch the videos where we actually spent a lot of time uh, looking at uh, the implicit measures and the explicit measures so this is an important thing to understand and this is uh, something that leads to a fact that it is always discouraged to create calculated columns inside of power bi because firstly they are they occupy a lot of memory so if you have uh, if you are sitting in a table uh, some some table like this then if you are creating four or five columns then very uh, very quickly you will c consume a lot of memory because obviously the column will be created for all the records so if you have to create calculated columns always try to create the calculated columns in the dimension table uh, because dimension tables are generally not long they, they, they do not occupy that uh, the, that much memory as a fact table so always try to avoid creating a calculated column inside a fact table so now let's have a look at the new table calculation functionality in the way that we had a look at the new column and if i put my mouse here it says write a dax expression to create a new table so we have functions in dax that return a table so if we can use a table function inside the new table where we write and DAX, DAX expression that you that uses a table function then we can create a new table so there are a lot of table functions available inside of DAX but we are going to just have a look at a very few which are very commonly used and I am going to uh, share a list of some of the very common uh, table functions that you can uh, have a look at in uh, as part of the preparation for for the exam but if you understand the uh, a few that how these work and how a table is created then it is very easy to understand the rest of these functions so now let's have a look at the first table function that we are going to explore in this video and that is the filter function so here i am inside the dax.guide website and here we can see the filter function and it says that returns a table that has been filtered this is the syntax of this function so it requires a table as its first argument and then it requires a filter expression so remember we had a look at the filter expression once we were looking at calculate so this is exactly the same thing so first you need to pass at the name of a table and then you need to pass a filter expression which is nothing but a boolean true false expression that is to be evaluated for each row of the table so obviously the 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 filter expression that you're going to pass should uh, should actually be on a column that belongs to the table that you have passed so let's see a very small example uh, of using filter and then we will we'll have a look at how the 
this function is actually working. So I am back in the Power BI desktop environment and I am going to click on the new table here. So remember that whenever I am going to create a new table, it is going to actually create a physical table. Again, this is something similar to a new column functionality that we saw that anything that you are going to create, whether the new column or new table, it is actually going to occupy memory. So now you can clearly see that even I haven't written everything, you can clearly see that there is a table with a with a different kind of an icon that you can see here. So let's now try to create a table. So what I'm trying to uh, do here is that I'm going to use the filter function. So I'm going to filter the transaction data table. So I already have the transaction data table here and I want to filter this transaction data table by using the filter function and I'm going to write a filter expression. So let me just first write that expression and then I'm going to explain what is actually that function doing. So here I have created a table, a table expression. I've written a table expression using the filter function. So I have used the filter function and I have passed the name of the table as the first argument and then I have written a filter expression which is quantity transaction data quantity greater than one. So I want to filter this transaction data table and I want to get a table where the quantity is greater than one. So let's run this particular expression and you are going to see in a few seconds that we are going to actually get a table. We are actually going to get a table. So I have given it the name table one. Uh, so you can see that this table one is created here. And here you are actually seeing a table which is very much similar to the transaction data table. But if you come down here and have a look at the number of rows. So here the number of rows are 265,334. Why? Because we are now filtering the table using this particular expression. So the values of quantity equal to one have been filtered out and only quantity greater than one are there in the table. So that is why you are seeing a number which is less than the number which is there for the transactions data. So remember transactions data had how many records? It had 269,720 records. So what actually this filter function is doing that it is using this filter expression, applying the filter on the records. So the same number of columns we are going to see as were there in the transactions data table. And the only thing that is going to change is the number of records. So you can have more filters here. You can have uh, a complex expression here. So you can write anything here, but the goal is to filter the records or filter the number of rows in the transactions data table. So what we have seen so far is that we have seen the functionality of the filter function and we have actually seen that there a physical table is now a part of our uh, data model. And if I even go in the model view, you can see that here you can you, are, you will find that table one has been created. So that table is, is similar to any table that has been uh, imported from the from the Power Query environment, and we can use it for for any of the purposes that we have in our mind. But remember that this again is something that you do not do while you are working inside of Power BI because you use the table functions as virtual table. So you do not want to create physical tables. You always want to create virtual tables and you want to use these uh, these table functions inside of measure. So now let's have a very brief look at how we can use this particular table one inside of a measure. And then we are going to see that how we can use this formula for filter as a virtual table inside of a measure. So let's now do that. So here I have created uh, another table by the name of table measure so that I am going to put all my measures related to the table functions here and I've created a simple measure here which you are seeing here right now and the name of this measure is tab total records table one and here I have used the count rows function. So remember we explored the count rows functions once we were looking at the single aggregation measures and I have just passed the value of table one to this count rows tax function. 
So now let's go and create a new page and I just want to bring this total records on the canvas and let's see what what is the result that we see here. So I actually see the value 265334 which we actually have seen inside the table view once we were creating the table one. So here I have actually created a table which is a physical table and then I have used that physical table inside a measure. But this is something that was just to let you know that how you can actually use these tables like we have been using some of the other tables. So even uh, if a table has come from the power query or if you are created, you have created a table function, a table using a table function, then the you can use it in, in exactly the same way. So wherever there is a table, you can actually uh, use that table inside a DAX function. But now I'm going to use it in another way, which I am going to call as a virtual table. So we are going to create a virtual table. So that virtual table is, is not going to sit anywhere inside of our data model. And then we are going to create the same DAX formula that we uh, have created uh, to calculate the total records. And this is exactly the way that you try and use the table functions inside of DAX. So here I have created a new measure and this measure I have named total records virtual table one. And here you are seeing something that we haven't seen as yet, which is the another DAX function, which is called VAR or variable. So how we are, we can use this functionality is that you are actually creating variable. So I've given it a name. So this is a name that I have given it. So uh, the only difference for a very between a variable and a measure, once you are naming it, that you cannot put any space once you are creating a variable. So here, that is why you do not see any space. So here, what I have written, I have written the same formula that we actually saw for creating the physical table. So I have created this, this variable. Then I have created another variable by the name of result. And I have just put two underscores so that I can actually uh, differentiate between the name of my physical measure and a variable. So uh, I'm going to explain that why, uh, you know, you, you need to do it as a best practice. But first, let's see the formula. So here I have used the measure that I created just uh, a few minutes ago and I have passed this table one to the count rows. Then you see another keyword here, which is return. And then you see that result one I have written. So you can create variables inside of measures and you can create variables using the keyword variable and remember that the the only difference in giving a name to a variable and the name that you give to a measure is that you cannot put a space so i have created two variables and whenever you create variables then uh, at the end of that process you have to actually write the keyword return and then i have written the value which I actually want to return from this measure. So this is the value that I want to return. And remember, this has to be a scalar value because here we are creating a measure and the, the process is going to be the same. So now let's uh, press enter and see what is the result that we get. So here this measure has been created and is visible inside my table measure. So now let me just pull this thing onto the canvas and let's see what is the result that we get. So here, if you see that the result is exactly the same that we got for the previous one. So this was the previous measure where we were using the physical table, but here we haven't created any table physically. So what we have done is that we have used a virtual table. So this expression here, because it is being used inside a measure and inside of and we are using a variable to create it so this is actually creating a virtual table so this virtual table is being passed to the count rows function which can take a table so you it, it has it, it can take a physical table or it can actually take a virtual table so this actually computes the same result that we saw for the previous function so this is how you use the table functions inside of DAX. This is the way that you actually use the table functions. Unless you want to create physical tables, there are certain scenarios where you want to create physical tables and you want to use uh, a, a, you know, a DAX function, a DAX table function for that. But 
that is something which is very very rare and something which is beyond the scope of of this particular exam but just remember that table functions create tables which can be used as virtual tables and used inside the measures so we are going to explore some of the some of uh, other table functions in the next videos within the same section so i will catch up with you in the next video